tell you about Cleopatra. First of all, she was born in 69 BC. Second of all, she was not even Egyptian, but Macedonian Greek. She was descendant from one of the generals of Alexander the Great. He conquered Egypt and then made a new capital which he called Alexandria. Cleopatra, age 18, co-ruled with her brother, Ptolemy XIII, who was 10. Ptolemy had three advisors who wanted Egypt under the rule of a male. We should kick your sister out of Egypt. Why, yes, I totally agree. But why? Because then you will rule Egypt. Oh, okay. Ah! Cleopatra wanted to go to war against her brother, so she raised an army in Syria. Then she needed to get Julius Caesar, the most powerful man in Rome, on her side. To get past the palace guards, she had a man named Apollodorus wrap her up in bed sheets and deliver her to Caesar. When Julius Caesar met Cleopatra, he at once fell in love with her. Caesar tried to persuade Ptolemy to make peace with Cleopatra, but it came to war in the end. Drinking water was poisoned, the Egyptian fleet was burned, and at last Ptolemy's army was defeated and he drowned in his heavy gold armor. Cleopatra was once again queen, but this time she ruled with her youngest brother named Ptolemy XIV. Julius Caesar decided to stay in Egypt. And soon, he and Cleopatra had a baby named Ptolemy Caesar, or Caesarian. Caesar declared Cleopatra to be a goddess in Egypt and in Rome. There were also rumors spreading that he was going to move the capital of Rome to Alexandria. Soon, Brutus and Cassius, two men whom Caesar had trusted, formed a conspiracy with 60 to 80 other senators to assassinate him. They chose March 15th, or the Ides of March, to do so. Though there were many warnings not to go to the Senate House, Caesar went anyway, and before he knew what was going on, it was too late. Caesar's will stated that he wanted Octavian, his 18-year-old grandnephew, to be his heir, instead of Caesarian. Octavian wanted to be the most important man in Rome, just like Caesar but that position was already held by Mark Antony. Octavian and Antony together hunted down the assassins of Julius Caesar and then decided to split Rome. Cleopatra received a message from Mark Antony ordering her to come to Tarsus as he was on a military campaign and she decided to bring all the splendor her art could command. Antony was captivated by Cleopatra. He set aside his war and married her at once. The newly married couple fished, ran around late at night, and played tricks on people. Antony stayed and stayed in Alexandria. They had three children. The oldest were twins, named Alexander Helios and Cleopatra Selene. The youngest was Ptolemy Philadelphus. Antony also made a political marriage with Octavian's sister, Octavia, but he always made it clear that his marriage to Cleopatra was the real one. Antony even gave most of his land to Cleopatra and her children. This shocked the people in Rome. Octavian began to spread rumors that Antony was a weakling bewitched by the Queen of Egypt. The last straw was when Antony kicked Octavia and her children out of his house in Rome. Soon, the war was on. No one knows why, but in the middle of the war, Cleopatra's ships headed back to Egypt. Antony chased after her and did so by abandoning his men, who had to surrender to Octavian. Cleopatra easily recuperated, but Mark Antony was sulking in self-pity. But with Octavian's armies closing in on Egypt, Cleopatra began making more desperate plans. She had a grand tomb prepared for herself and began investigating poisons. When Anthony came back a few days later after losing another battle, he couldn't find Cleopatra. When he got word that she was dead, he unsuccessfully tried to kill himself. 
But she was not dead, and as he was dying, Antony tried to comfort her and said that he had achieved glory and his death was honorable and peaceful. Octavian's army soon captured Cleopatra, and finding her life meaningless, Cleopatra sent a letter to Octavian. In that letter, Cleopatra asked to be buried in the same tomb as Antony. Octavian was worried that Cleopatra intended to take her own life, but by the time his officers got there, it was too late. Her two servants had laid her out beautifully, but she was dead. Many believed that she wanted a poisonous asp to bite her, and that it had been smuggled in with a basket of figs. Cleopatra was 39 when she died in the year 30 BC, and she was buried with Mark Antony as she had wished. She had become a great legend, just as Alexander the Great had. She had ruled Egypt for 21 years and brought it to new heights. If she had achieved her goal of bringing Egypt back to its former glory, then she would have ruled the Western world instead of the emperors of Rome. She and her descendants will be remembered forever. Cleopatra.